Today is October the 25th. Today we hear Nehemiah say, I tried. As we read through the Bible in a year today, I'd like you to finish reading the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapters 10 through 13. Now, in Nehemiah 10, again, after naming uh, several of the leaders, he mentions that they together make a vow. Look together, uh, look, look with me here at verse 29, chapter 10, verse 29. They solemnly promised to carefully follow all the commands, regulations, and decrees of the Lord, our Lord. Um, so they make a promise and they write down the promise. Uh, they, they spell out everything that they're going to do. And things look just absolutely wonderful. Chapter 11, people occupy Jerusalem again. Again, we have the names of individuals who come back into uh, Jerusalem. The ancestry in chapter 12 of the priests and the Levites. Uh, the dedication of Jerusalem's wall and how they began to make provisions for temple worship. Nehemiah returns to Babylon uh, to finish up things that he needed to do there. He returns to Jerusalem in chapter 13, and everything is going wrong. In uh, 13.4, Eliashib, the priest who'd been appointed as supervisor of the storerooms of the temple of her God, who is also a relative of Tobiah, converted a large storage room and placed it at Tobiah's disposal. He let Tobiah, and Tobiah was one of the enemies that attempted to block the construction of the temple and the rebuilding of the walls. He now lives in the temple. Uh, verse uh, 11, uh, Nehemiah sees what's going on and he realizes that people are no longer bringing provisions to the temple and the priests are going hungry. So he says, 1311, why has the temple of God been neglected? Verse 15, in those days, I saw men of Judah treading out their wine presses on the Sabbath. Nehemiah goes wild. He, he yells, he shouts, he tells them not to do this. He sees merchants selling on the Sabbath. So he drives them out of the temple. And what happens? They go and they camp outside the temple gates, the merchants and tradements. Uh, tradesmen with a variety of wares camped outside Jerusalem um, on the Sabbath just waiting to get back in. Nehemiah uh, sees new intermarriage. Um, chapter 13, verse 25. Um, he sees people, uh, men who have intermarried with pagan women. Now again, the issue is not the marriage. The issue is that the women have not converted to Judaism. Uh, they are worshiping their own gods, and Jewish men are allowing this to happen in their homes. In fact, Nehemiah makes a point of saying their children didn't even speak Hebrew. Their children spoke the language of uh, their mother's ancestry. So in verse 25, I confronted them. I called down curses on them. I beat some of them. I pulled out their hair. I made them swear in the name of God that they wouldn't let their children intermarry with the pagan people of the land. After everything, after rebuilding the temple, after rebuilding the wall, after starting the temple uh, practices again, the sacrifices Israel still is not obeying God. 
<laughs> at the end of the book, Nehemiah says, chapter 13, verse 31, remember this in my favor, O Lord. <laughs> Nehemiah basically looks at God and says, you know what? I tried. I tried. But the people are still sinning. That is where the New Testament comes in. Hundreds of years later, some 400 years later, but Israel is still sinning as they had before. Today, read Nehemiah 10 to 13. See the story of Israel continuing in their sin. Nehemiah 10 through 13, New Living Translation. Nehemiah 10. The document was ratified and sealed with the following names. The governor, Nehemiah, son of Hakaliah, also Zedekiah. The following priests, Sireah, Azariah, Jeremiah, Pashur, Amariah, Melchijah, Hattush, Shebaniah, Malak, Hiram, Miramoth, Obadiah, Daniel, Ginnathon, Baruch, Meshulam, Abijah, Mijumin, Meaziah, Bilgiai, and Shimea. These were the priests. The following Levites, Joshua son of Azniah, Benui from the family of Hanadad, Cadmiel and their fellow Levites, Shebaniah, Hodiah, Kelida, Pelea, Hanan, Micah, Rehob, Hashabiah, Zakor, Sherebiah, Shebaniah, Hodiah, Benai, and Benainu. The following leaders, Perosh, Pehath Moab, Elam, Zatu, Benai, Bunai, Asgad, Bibi, Adonijah, Bigvei, Aden, Ater, Hezekiah, Azor, Hodiah, Hashem, Bezei, Harif, Anathoth, Nebai, Magpaish, Meshulam, Hezer, Meshezabel, Zadok, Jadua, Pelatiah, Hanan, Aniah, Hoshea, Hananiah, Hashab, Halohash, Pilha, Shobek, Rehum, Hashabna, Maaseah, Ahiah, Hanan, Anan, Malak, Haram, and Baana. Then the rest of the people, the priests, Levites, gatekeepers, singers, temple servants, and all who had separated themselves from the pagan people of the land in order to obey the law of God, together with their wives, sons, daughters, and all who were old enough to understand, joined their leaders and bound themselves with an oath. They swore a curse on themselves if they failed to obey the law of God as issued by his servant Moses. They solemnly promised to carefully follow all the commands, regulations, and decrees of the Lord our Lord. We promise not to let our daughters marry the pagan people of the land, and not to let our sons marry their daughters. We also promise that if the people of the land should bring any merchandise and grain to be sold on the Sabbath, or on any other holy day, we will refuse to buy it. Every seventh year we will let our land rest, and we will cancel all debts owed to us. In addition, we promise to obey the commands and pay the annual temple tax of one-eighth of an ounce of silver for the care of the temple of our God. This will provide for the bread of the presence, for the regular grain offerings and burnt offerings, for the offerings on the Sabbath, the new moon celebrations, and annual festivals, for the holy offerings and for the sin offerings to make atonement for Israel." We will provide for everything necessary for the work of the temple of our God. We have cast sacred lots to determine when, at regular times each year, the families of the priests, Levites, and common people should bring wood to God's temple to be burned on the altar of the Lord our God, as is written in the law. We promise to bring the first part of every harvest to the Lord's temple year after year, whether it be crop from the soil or from fruit trees. We agree to give God our oldest sons and the firstborn of all our herds and flocks, as prescribed in the law. We will present them to the priest who minister in the temple of our God. We will store the produce in the storerooms in the temple of our God. We will bring the best of our flour and other grain offerings, the best of our fruit and the best of our new wine and olive oil. 
And we promise to bring to the Levites a tenth of everything our land produces, for it is the Levites who collect the tithes in all the rural towns. A priest, a descendant of Aaron, will be with the Levites as they receive these tithes, and a tenth of all that is collected as tithes will be delivered by the Levites to the temple of our God and placed in the storeroom. The people and the Levites must bring these offerings of grain, new wine, and olive oil to the storeroom and place them in the sacred containers near the ministering priest, the gatekeepers, and the singers. We promise together not to neglect the temple of our God. Nehemiah 11 The leaders of the people were living in Jerusalem, the holy city. A tenth of the people from other towns of Judah and Benjamin were chosen by sacred lots to live there too, while the rest stayed where they were. And the people commended everyone who volunteered to resettle in Jerusalem. Here is a list of the names of the provincial officials who came to live in Jerusalem. Most of the people, priests, Levites, temple servants, and descendants of Solomon's servants continue to live in their hometowns in the various towns of Judah, but some of the people from Judah and Benjamin resettled in Jerusalem. From the tribe of Judah, Athiah son of Uzziah, son of Zechariah, son of Amariah, son of Shephatiah, son of Mahalalel, of the family of Perez, also Maaseah son of Barak, son of Colhoza, son of Hezea, son of Adea, son of Joirib, son of Zechariah, of the family of Shelah. There were 468 descendants of Perez who lived in Jerusalem, all outstanding men. From the tribe of Benjamin, Salu, son of Meshulam, son of Joab, son of Padea, son of Kolea, son of Maaseah, son of Ithiel, son of Jeshea. After him were Gabii and Salii, and a total of 928 relatives. Their chief officer was Joel, son of Zikri, who was assisted by Judah, son of Hasanua, second in command over the city. From the priest, Judea, son of Joirib, Jachin and Sirea, son of Hilkiah, son of Meshulam, son of Zadok, son of Mireoth, son of Ahitub, the supervisor of the temple of God, also 822 of their associates, who worked at the temple. Also, Adea, son of Jeroham, son of Peleliah, son of Amzai, son of Zechariah, son of Pashur, son of Melchizedek, along with 242 of his associates, who were heads of their families. Also Amashai, son of Azarel, son of Azai, son of Meshilamoth, son of Immer, and 128 of his outstanding associates. Their chief officer was Zabdiel, son of Hagadolam. From the Levites, Shemaiah, son of Hashab, son of Azrakam, son of Hashabiah, son of Bunai, also Shabbatai and Jazabad, who were in charge of the work outside the temple of God, also Mataniah, son of Micah, son of Zabdi, a descendant of Asaph, who led in thanksgiving and prayer, also Bakbakiah, who was Mataniah's assistant, and Abda, son of Shuma, son of Shemua, son of Galel, son of Juduthan. In all, there were 284 Levites in the holy city. From the gatekeepers, Akab, Talman, and 172 of their associates who guarded the gates, the other priests, Levites, and the rest of the Israelites, wherever their family inheritance was located, in any of the towns of Judah. The temple servants, however, whose leaders were Ziha and Gishpa, all lived in the hill of Ophel. The chief officer of the Levites in Jerusalem was Uzai, son of Bani, son of Hashabiah, son of Mataniah, son of Micah, a descendant of Asaph, whose family served as singers at God's temple. Their daily responsibilities were carried out according to the terms of a royal command. Pethahiah, son of Meshezabel, a descendant of Zerah, son of Judah, was the royal advisor in all matters of public administration. As for the surrounding villages with their open fields, some of the people of Judah lived in Kiriath Arba with its settlements, Debon with its settlements, and Jacabzeel with its villages. They also lived in Jeshua, Molada, Beth Pelet, Hazar Shul, Beersheba with its settlements, Ziglag, and Makalna with its settlements. They also lived in Enrimen, Zora, Jarmuth, Zenoa, 
and Adullam with their surrounding villages. They also lived in Lachish with its nearby fields and Azekah with its surrounding villages. So the people of Judah were living all the way from Beersheba in the south to the valley of Hinnom. Some of the people of Benjamin lived at Geba, Michmash, Ijah, and Bethel with its settlements. They also lived in Anathoth, Nob, Ananiah, Hazor, Ramah, Gitaim, Hadid, Zeboam, Nabalit, Lod, Ono, and the Valley of Craftsmen. Some of the Levites who lived in Judah were sent to live with the tribe of Benjamin. Here is a list of the priests and Levites who returned with Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and Jeshua the high priest. Sireah, Jeremiah, Ezra, Amariah, Maluk, Hattush, Shechaniah, Haram, Merimoth, Ido, Gidathon, Abijah, Minumin, Moadiah, Bilga, Shemaiah, Joyarib, Judea, Salu, Amuk, Hilkiah, and Judea. These were the leaders of the priest and their associates in the days of Joshua. The Levites who returned with them were Joshua, Binuai, Cadmiel, Sherebiah, Judah, and Mattaniah, who, with his associates, was in charge of the songs of thanksgiving. Their associates, Bakbukiah and Unai, stood opposite them during the service. Joshua the high priest was the father of Joachim. Joachim was the father of Eliashib. Eliashib was the father of Jehoiada. Jehoiada was the father of Johanan. Johanan was the father of Jedua. Now when Joachim was high priest, the family leaders of the priest were as follows. Merea was the leader of the family of Sereah. Hananiah was the leader of the family of Jeremiah. Meshulam was the leader of the family of Ezra. Jehohanan was the leader of the family Amariah. Jonathan was the leader of the family of Moloch. Joseph was leader of the family of Shechaniah. Adna was leader of the family of Haram. Helkai was leader of the family of Merimoth. Zechariah was leader of the family of Ido. Meshulam was leader of the family of Ginnathon. Zikri was leader of the family of Abijah. There was also a leader of the family of Minumin. Piltai was leader of the family of Moadiah. Shemua was leader of the family of Bilgah. Jehonathan was leader of the family of Shemaiah. Matnai was leader of the family of Joyarib. Uzai was leader of the family of Judea. Kalei was leader of the family of Salu. Eber was leader of the family of Amic. Hashabiah was the leader of the family of Hilakiah. Nathanel was leader of the family of Judea. A record of the Levite families was kept during the years when Eliashib, Joiada, Johanan, and Jedua served as high priest. Another record of the priests was kept during the reigns of Darius the Persian. A record of the heads of the Levite families was kept in the book of history down to the day of Johanan, the grandson of Eliashib. These were the family leaders of the Levites, Hashabiah, Sherebiah, Jeshua, Binuai, Cadmiel, and other ancestors, whom stood opposite them during the ceremonies of praise and thanksgiving, one section responding to the other, as commanded by David the man of God. This included Mataniah, Bakbukiah, and Obadiah. Meshulam, Talman, and Akab were the gatekeepers in charge of the storerooms at the gates. These all served in the days of Joachim, son of Jeshua, son of Jehozadak, and in the days of Nehemiah, the governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe. For the dedication of the new wall of Jerusalem, the Levites throughout the land were asked to come to Jerusalem to assist in the ceremonies. They were to take part in the joyous occasion with their songs of thanksgiving and with the music of cymbals, harps, and lyres. The singers were brought together from the region around Jerusalem and from the villages of the Netophathites. They also came from Beth Gilgal and the rural areas near Geba and Asmaveth for the singers had built their own settlements around Jerusalem. The priests and the Levites first purified themselves, then they purified the people, the gates, and the wall. I led the leaders of Judah to the top of the wall and organized two large choirs to give thanks. One of the choirs proceeded southward along the top of the wall to the Dungate. Hoshea and half the leaders of Judah followed them, along with Azariah, Ezra, Meshulam, Judah, 
Benjamin, Shemaiah, and Jeremiah. Then came the priests who played trumpets, including Zechariah, son of Jonathan, son of Shemaiah, son of Mataniah, son of Micaiah, son of Zachor, a descendant of Asaph. And Zechariah's colleagues were Shemaiah, Ezrael, Milalai, Gilalai, Maiai, Nathanael, Judah, and Hanani. They used the musical instruments prescribed by David, the man of God. Ezra the scribe led this procession. At the fountain gate, they went straight up the steps. On the ascent of the city wall, toward the city of David, they passed the house of David and proceeded to the water gate on the east. The second choir gave thanks around the other way to meet them. I followed them together with the other half of the people along the top of the wall past the tower of the ovens to the broad wall, then past the Ephraim gate to the old city gate, past the fish gate and the tower of Hananel, and on to the tower of the hundred. Then we continued on the sheep gate and stopped at the guard gate. The two choirs that were giving thanks then proceeded to the temple of God, where they took their places. So did I, together with the group of leaders who were with me. We went together with the trumpet-playing priests, Eliakim, Maaseah, Minumim, Micaiah, Elioenai, Zechariah, and Hananiah, and the singers, Maaseah, Shemaiah, Eliezer, Uzai, Jehohanan, Melchijah, Elam, and Ezer, they played and sang loudly under the direction of Jezrehiah, the choir director. Many sacrifices were offered on that joyous day, for God had given the people cause for great joy. The women and children also participated in the celebration, and the joy of the people of Jerusalem could be heard far away. On that day, men were appointed to be in charge of the storerooms for the offerings, the first part of the harvest, and the tithes. They were responsible to collect from the fields outside the town the portions required by the law of the priests and Levites. For all the people of Judah took joy in the priests and Levites and their work. They performed the service of their God and the service of purification as commanded by David and his son Solomon, and so did the singers and gatekeepers. The custom of having choir directors to lead the choir in hymns of praise and thanksgiving to God began long ago in the days of David and Asaph. So now, in the days of Zerubbabel and Nehemiah, all Israel brought a daily supply of food for the singers and gatekeepers and the Levites. The Levites, in turn, gave a portion of what they received to the priests, the descendants of Aaron. Nehemiah 13 On the same day, as the book of Moses was being read to the people, the passage was found that said, No Amorite Moabite should ever be permitted to enter the assembly of God. For they had not provided the Israelites with food and water in the wilderness. Instead, they hired Balaam to curse them, though our God turned the curse into a blessing. When this passage of the law was read, all those of foreign descent were immediately excluded from the assembly. Before this had happened, Eliashib, the priest, who had been appointed as supervisor of the storerooms of the temple of God, and who was also a relative of Tobiah, had converted a large storeroom and placed it in Tobiah's disposal. The room had previously been used for storing grain and offerings, the frankincense, various articles for the temple, and the tithes of grain, new wine, and olive oil, which were prescribed for the Levites, the singers, and the gatekeepers, as well as the offerings for the priest. I was not in Jerusalem at that time, for I had returned to King Artaxerxes of Babylon in the thirty-second year of his reign, though I later asked his permission to return. When I arrived back in Jerusalem, I learned about Eliab's evil deed by providing Tobiah a room in the courtyards of the temple of God. I became very upset and threw all of Tobiah's belongings out of the room. Then I demanded that the rooms be purified and brought back the articles of God's temple, the grain offerings and the frankincense. I also discovered that the Levites had not been given their prescribed portions of food, so they and the singers who were to conduct the worship services had all returned to work their fields. I immediately confronted the leaders and demanded, Why has the temple of God been neglected? 
Then I called all the Levites back again and restored them to their proper duties, and once more all the people of Judah began bringing their tithes of grain, new wine, and olive oil to the temple's storerooms. I assigned supervisors for the storerooms, Shelemiah the priest, Zadok the scribe, and Padeah one of the Levites, and I appointed Hanan, son of Zakur, and grandson of Mataniah as their assistant. These men had an excellent reputation, and it was their job to make honest distributions to their fellow Levites. Remember this good deed, O my God, and do not forget all that I have faithfully done for the temple of my God and its servants. In those days I saw men of Judah treading out their wine presses on the Sabbath, They were also bringing in grain, loading it on donkeys, and bringing their wine, grapes, figs, and all sorts of produce into Jerusalem to sell on the Sabbath. So I rebuked them for selling their produce on that day. Some men of Tyre, who lived in Jerusalem, were bringing in fish and all kinds of merchandise. They were selling it on the Sabbath to the people of Judah, and in Jerusalem at that. So I confronted the nobles of Judah. Why are you profaning the Sabbath in this evil way? I asked. Wasn't it just this sort of thing that your ancestors did that caused our God to bring all this trouble upon us and our city? Now you're bringing even more wrath upon Israel by permitting the Sabbath to be desecrated in this way. Then I commanded the gates of Jerusalem should be shut as darkness falls every Friday evening, not to be opened until the Sabbath ended. I sent some of my own servants to guard the gates so that no merchandise could be brought in on the Sabbath day. The merchants and the tradesmen, with a variety of wares, camped outside Jerusalem once or twice, but I spoke sharply to them and said, What are you doing out here, camping around the wall? If you do this again, I will arrest you. And that was the last time they came on the Sabbath. Then I commanded the Levites to purify themselves and to guard the gates in order to preserve the holiness of the Sabbath. Remember this good deed also, my God. Have compassion on me according to your great and unfailing love. About the same time I realized that some men of Judah had married women from Ashdod, Ammon, and Moab. Furthermore, half their children spoke the language of Ashdod or of some other people and could not speak the language of Judah at all. So I confronted them and called down curses on them. I beat some of them and pulled out their hair. I made them swear in the name of God that they would not let their children intermarry with the pagan people of the land. Wasn't this exactly what led King Solomon of Israel to sin? I demanded. There was no king of any nation who could compare to him, and God loved him and made him king over all Israel. But even he was led into sin by his foreign wives. How could you even think of committing this sinful deed and acting unfaithfully toward God by marrying foreign women? One of the sons of Jehoiada, son of Eliashib, the high priest, had married the daughter of Sambalat, the Horonite, so I banished him from my presence. Remember them, O my God, for they have defiled the priesthood and the solemn vows of the priest and Levites. So I purged out everything foreign and assigned tasks to the priest and Levites, making certain that each knew his work. I also made sure that the supply of wood for the altar and the first portions of the harvest were brought at the proper time. Remember this in my favor, O my God. Like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomeahope.com. Tomorrow, we'll see God's Q&A.